YouTube, what's going on? I'm super excited for this video because we are going to be talking about why some products sometimes stop working on your hair. And that is probably one of the most frustrating things on this hair care journey where you try something, you love it, your hair loves it, but then over time, something happens and it stops performing the way that it initially performed. So in this video, we're going to dissect that and look at why that even happens in the first place. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's just jump straight into it. So there are probably one of two things going on here. Either there is a change in the product or there is a change in your hair, okay? So when it comes to the change in the product, there are two underlying things that could potentially be the causes. Number one, if there was a brand, hypothetically speaking, that started off at home, right? Making their own custom oil blends, their own extracts, doing their own thing, but they transfer over to a contract manufacturer meaning they decide to scale up, sometimes those original oil blends cannot transfer over to a contract manufacturer. Now, of course, it's a case-by-case -case thing, but a lot of times, contract manufacturers who create formulas on a larger scale have connections with certain suppliers. So for example, if brand number one started off in the kitchen, started off at home, got her coconut oil from XYZ company, XYZ company may not be able to work with contract manufacturer on a larger scale because of quantity reasons, pricing reasons. So the contract manufacturer sources their coconut oil from company ABC. Or, and not X, Y, Z, if that makes sense. So they have certain connections that they maintain when it comes to certain oils and blends and surfactants. So that could be a potential reason as to why a product seems to have changed. Okay, number two in regards to product change. I see this one quite often where the price of the raw material, AKA the ingredient changes. Hypothetically speaking, BTMS, Behendra Ammonia Methyl Sulfate. Let's say it cost, it initially cost the brand $3 to put in the formula at the second ingredient where you're getting this amazing slip, amazing softness, all these great things. But the BTMS 50 supplier decides to increase the price to so let's say $10. In that case, the brand has to make a decision. Are we going to have to pay for the $10 for the BTMS 50 and keep the ingredient in the second um, ingredient of the list? Do we either replace it completely and swap it out for something else? Or do we take it from the second ingredient and put it down to like the eighth? or the seventh ingredient, which might lower the performance. So those are the first two. Now when it comes to change in your hair, that is actually a thing where the formula is exactly the same, nothing has happened behind the scenes, but your hair has changed and therefore it's no longer accepting the product as it used to. So for example, if you have, let's say, low porosity hair, and over time you decide to get color treatments or you decide to use excessive heat on your hair or do something that physically changes the makeup of your hair, that favorite conditioner or moisturizer or leave-in will not operate the same over time. It'll seem like the formula changed, but really it's your hair that changed. So therefore, that product that used to be super moisturizing to your hair, since your low porosity hair went to high porosity hair, now it can no longer hold that moisture. Now it seems like the product is it working your hair is super dry all the time so that is more of a hair change and the last thing that can make it seem like a product stopped working in regards to hair change is product buildup if you are not consistently clarifying your hair once again this is a case-by-case -case thing but if you have excessive amounts of product on your hair your hair is not going to receive the new product as well, because the only as if you're putting product on top of product on top of product. So this product on top can be super amazing for your hair at one point, but since you have all this product buildup, it's not really getting to the cuticle to really perform as it should, or as you know it should, you know? So I would say be sure to clarify your hair at least once a month or once every two months. You can use apple cider vinegar rinses, you know, you can use actual product, whatever floats your boat, but clarifying your hair is honestly, in my opinion, essential, especially since the products that we use do have a lot of butters and oils and creams and things of that nature in our hair care regimen already. So kind of giving our hair a fresh start once a month or once every two months would be ideal to keep up with product performance. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you ever come across something that just stops working all together, 
definitely reference back to this video to see what it could potentially be, especially if it could potentially be some changes in your hair. And I have a question for you, of course. When it comes to sealing your hair, what do you prefer? Do you prefer a butter or an oil? when you seal your hair, and which one do you prefer? Let me know below, and I look forward to joining the conversation with you. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel and staying in the loop for more curly chemistry content. This is such a unique channel, and I love the community that we have created, especially in the comments below. You guys are learning so much, and that is what's making me so happy. So thank you guys for being here. Don't forget to grab your Curly Girls Guys and Hair Care ingredients if you haven't done so already. I will have the link below for you to check out and if you're interested in starting a hair care line you can always work with me one-on-one -on -one, and i'll have a link below for you as well all right guys i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys soon bye